and the temperature is given by the tangent line displayed in orange. At low energies, the tangent line is pretty flat. We get cold crystals. But at higher energies, the tangent line looks more vertical. We have hot crystals. We want to understand why energy, in the form of heat, flows from high to low temperature. If we remove a lot of energy on the hot crystal, we see that the entropy only decreases by a little. Now, if we give this energy from the hot crystal to the cold crystal, we realize that the entropy increases by a lot. So the total entropy of the system has increased, which also means that the total amount of available microstates of the full system has increased. But there's a subtlety that needs to be noticed. The fact that the entropy of the hot crystal has decreased less doesn't mean that its total available microstates have decreased less. This is because the total amount of microstates is a product and not a sum. On this graph, we plot the product of the microstates. Omega 1 and Omega 2 are respectively the available microstates for the hot and cold crystals. Out of equilibrium, the hot crystal has more microstates than the cold crystal. We can locate where we are on the product surface. The microstates are displayed in an arbitrary normalized unit. If both crystals are identical, then they will reach a point on the surface where they both have the same amount of microstates. The transformation may look like this, and as we can see, the hot crystal loses more available microstates than the cold one gains. But even then, the total amount of microstates still increases because it is just the product of each subsystems. 